Well, good evening, members, officers, visitors, and members of the public. I've got an echo. I'll start again. Good evening, members, officers, visitors, and members of the public. Still got an echo. I'm Councillor Tim Gibson. I'll be chairing this evening's meeting. The meeting will be recorded and proceedings will be conducted in accordance with the Council's constitution, including procedural rules, which are available on the Council's website. Could I ask remote attendees to turn off their camera unless they're speaking? I remind you that the instant messaging facility is to facilitate democratic services, alerting me to a remote issue. Any member of the public abusing the instant messaging facility may be removed from the meeting. Item one on the agenda is the emergency evacuation procedure. There is no planned evacuation drill this evening, and accordingly, if the alarm sounds, it's to be treated as a genuine need to evacuate. There are emergency exits to my right, or through the passageway to my left as you leave the chamber, and then via the main staircase at the front of the building. Please note, lifts must not be used. The assembly point is on the far side of the car park, and it's important that you remain there and do not return to the building until I have announced it is safe to do so. If anyone present would need assistance in evacuating and negotiating the stairs, could you please inform me now so that we can make necessary arrangements to assist you? Thank you. Before I proceed with the formal consideration of the applications this evening, I did say at the extraordinary committee meeting last month, prior to standing in silent reflection, that I would facilitate a fuller tribute in respect to the sad passing of Councillor Cameron Beart, a former stalwart of this committee. And I think this standing planning committee is the most appropriate place to do so. And I'd like to now invite Councillor James Hunt, please, uh, to speak. Thank you, Chair. Don't think there are many councillors who can say they really enjoy planning. But I know that for, Cam for Cameron, he certainly did enjoy it. I looked back on messages between us earlier, which was almost a daily occurrence, and the majority of discussions were planning related. A lot of messages were moaning about the administration, but the majority was to talk especially about planning on the Isle of Sheppey. No matter what area, planning, regeneration, housing, simply anything. It was always clear that Cameron wanted what was best for residents on the island. But whilst also being realistic and having an understanding of the planning system and how we have to deal with applications, he put 100% into everything he did. Cameron was a stickler for detail, and I don't know what he ever thought he was going to do with the information he collected. I don't know if members of the committee realise, but he would note down how every member voted on each application. He probably had more data on the planning than our policy team. When we come to part five discussions, they certainly won't be the same again. I've spent almost eight years on this committee with Cameron always being by my side. I'm going to miss him. I'm sure everyone will. Thank you, Councillor Hunt, and I'm sure that's echoed um, around the chamber. Thank you. I will now proceed with the, the formal part of the, the meeting. So the meeting has a quasi-judicial role and determines the rights and obligations of the applicant. Members must consider each application and everything that is said in the meeting concerning the application and make their decision based only on their planning judgment of the information which is available to them. Following a decision by members, delegated authority is given to the planning officer to issue the decision notice. And planning permission is not granted or refused until the issue of that decision notice. Any member of the council who is not a member of the planning committee may attend as a visiting member and may speak having given prior notification. Such visiting members may of course include ward members. And whilst visiting members can speak on an application, they are not permitted to vote. Any member acting as a substitute on a planning committee must have undertaken appropriate training before doing so. The members must remain in the meeting for the whole time that each item is being debated and should not vote on that item unless they have done so. I would now like to welcome our public speakers and remind you that you have three minutes to speak. 
and an audible warning of time will be given when there are 30 seconds remaining. If the meeting is deferred to conduct a site meeting, you may speak both at this meeting and at the site meeting, but there will be no opportunity to speak when the item comes back to the planning committee. The meeting will follow the order set out in the agenda. However, I will amend the order if there's good reason for doing so. And in particular, I'll take any items where a member of the public has registered to speak first before moving on to the remainder of the agenda, and I'll verbally reorder the agenda as appropriate. Now take item two, which is apologies for absence and any substitutes, please. Thank you, Chair. Apologies received from Councillor James Hall. His substitute is Councillor Richard Palmer. Councillor Tony Winkless. His substitute is Councillor Angela Harrison. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we want to item three, which is to invite members' declarations of disclosable pecuniary interests under the Localism Act. Councillor Martington, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I have to declare an interest in item two, three, the Russian and Club. I, I shall leave the room while it's discussed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jays. Disclosable pecuniary interest in 2.2103 Barton's Hill Drive. Thank you. And uh, disclosable non pecuniary interests. Councillor Palmer. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to disclose one and item 2.4, the Burntwick, the Street Up Church. I did speak on the previous application. I have called this application in, and I think the applicant would feel if I took part in the vote that I would be either predetermined or biased against the decision. Even so, I would approach it with an open mind, but I think it's easier to declare that and to leave the room after I've spoken as the board member. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now move on to uh, item four, which is to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of January 2023, minute numbers 573 to 579, and the minutes of the extraordinary meeting on the 25th of January 2023 as a correct record. Members, is it your wish that I record them as such? Thank you. So now move on to uh, item five, which is um, our deferred item. And this is uh, number 22 oblique 503385 oblique full, and it's Wynn Hall, First Avenue, East Church, Sheerness, Kent. And I'll thank the officer for um, an outline and any updates, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there's no update for members. Um, I'll just give a brief background to the application. Um, firstly, members, I'm sure, will remember this um, application. It was reported to committee in November of last year. Um, it's an application to um, create a holiday park um, within um, the grounds of a property called Wynne Hall. Um, and uh, the scheme presented to members was for um, 20 caravans um, to be stationed on the site. Um, members uh, gave delegated powers to officers to deal with the application subject to some amendments being made. Um, one was to reduce the number of units to 18 um, and the other was to make some minor layout changes. Essentially, members were concerned about this element of the scheme here. Um, so um, in discussions with the applicant, that's been um, that's been carried out. Um, we're now down to 18 units and the unit that was originally here has been repositioned over in this in this location here. Um, but um, uh, following the um, the resolution by committee, um, it was um, uh, we we realised unfortunately that um, the original response from the parish council, um, although that was included in the um, the main report, um, there was a second response from the parish council which hadn't been reported to members. Um, so. Um, we have brought this back to committee to give members the opportunity to consider the parish council comments and they are set out in the addendum um, that you have in front of you together with the original November report, um, which is appendix one to that. Um, and obviously that's to ensure that the council has taken into account um, all comments that have been made. Um, before making this decision. Our recommendation remains the same, um, that planning permission should be granted. Um, obviously, that is now on the basis of the 18 unit scheme, um, which the applicant has agreed to, rather than the 20 unit scheme um, that was originally submitted in November. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Byrne. I move the officer recommendation. Could I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Jays. Members, I'll look to the floor. 
Any comments? Questions? Okay, we'll take this one straight to the vote. Those in favour of the officer recommendation for approval? That's unanimous, members. Thank you very much indeed. So permission is granted subject to the issue of the decision notice. Uh, we now move on to item uh, two one. And this one is uh, 22 oblique 504096 oblique full. And it's a thatch cottage, Staple Street, Borton and Bleen. And again, I think the officer for uh, an outline. Any recommendations? Any um, updates, please? Yeah, thanks, Chairman. There's um, there's a small update which which will become apparent when we look at the photographs. But essentially, on um, within paragraph one point three, it says large sections of the thatch roof are missing. Um, I think it would be more accurate if that said the thatch roof was missing in its entirety. Um, but I said, but we'll come onto the photos in a second. Um, in terms of the application, what it, and what it's for. So the application proposes the demolition of the existing dwelling. Um, and the construction of one three bedroom and one four bedroom dwelling. In terms of the site, here we can see it outlined in red. So it's quite a generously sized plot with just one dwelling on it at the moment. Um, sits at the end of end of the row of dwellings before it goes out into the open countryside. Is in the built up area boundary. Um, the existing site is shown here with a dilapidated dwelling on the site. Um, it's been extended over the years fairly unsympathetically um, and now is in a very, very poor state of repair. There's been a stu structural report received with the application, which has essentially shown that it's um, it, it, it's not fit for purpose and it needs to um, it needs to be demolished. This is this. This is the adjacent row of dwellings, so the site is just to the just to the right, separated by this brick wall here. So we've got two storey detached dwellings next to the application site. And here's essentially just looking towards the site again with that wall there and the site here. Uh, this is a photo. You imagine the person taking the photo and the sites to the left, just um, just behind the person taking the photo. So there's built form further down the road. Um, and this essentially just looks the other way. So there's a there's a variety of so of, of dwellings in the in the area, but adjacent to the site are the are the two storey detached dwellings. This is taken towards the site, towards the adjacent dwelling. Um, the site is slightly lower than that um, than the adjacent site, and this is this is the rear, which is looking out into the countryside. Here's the existing block plan, which is very similar to the site location plan we started off with. And here's the proposed block plan with the two detached dwellings. This is the three bedroom one and this is the four bedroom one. The existing elevations of the of the cottage, which I won't dwell on because the, the photographs were a bit better in terms of representing what's currently on the site. Um, I'll enlarge, bear with me, I'll enlarge that a bit. These are the proposed elevations. See, it's a detached two story pitch roof dwelling, um, match, matching in many respects the style of those um, units that are, um, that are adjacent to the site. And here's the four bedroom unit, which which is similar, but has this projecting element to the side above the integral garage. And um, finally. Yes. Sorry, I'll just zoom out again. So top right is the is the proposed street scene. As you can see, the the ridge line of those dwellings sit, sit lower than the than the adjacent dwelling. Um, and here's the block plan, which includes the where the parking spaces are going to the front and and between the dwellings. Um, so in conclusion, uh, the site is located within the built up area boundary, and upon previously developed land, the site is appropriately sized to accommodate the dwellings parking and private amenity space and will in my view be in keeping with the existing street scene on this basis <clears throat> and as per the assessment set out in the report officers recommend that planning permission is granted thank you very much
Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Could I now invite um, Parish Councillor Jeff Tuck, please, to speak on this item? Good evening, members. Could I start by offering my condolences for Cameron's passing? Um, I spent a number of times talking to him about different things. He was a very useful member of this committee. The Thatch Cottage, as you've seen, um, it has been taken apart. Dunkirk Parish Council are of the opinion that residential use should obviously go on, on that site. It is within the, the village envelope. Our concern is that there are two dwellings on there. Uh, the entrances has been agreed by KCC, but I think with the number of bedrooms and the number of possible cars that could be on the site, it's overdeveloped. Um, we think it's out of keeping. I think the other thing I would just ought to bring to your notice is that since this has come to you, the Bolton and Dunkirk neighbourhood plan has now passed examination and goes to referendum next Thursday. So that should carry a little bit more weight than it did when this report was written. Uh, apart from that, I think it's it's fairly obvious that it's there for residential. Our concern, and I believe that of Hernhill Parish Council that abuts the north side and the west side, which are the, the bits in the countryside, um, Hernhill is there. Uh, they also feel that this is overdeveloped. Again, no problem with the development going on there. Just too many, too much, too many cars, and it's a very narrow road, which I'm sure some local councillors will be able to attest to. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you, Councillor Tuck. I now uh, move the officer recommendation. For a seconder, please. Thank you very much. Councillor Valentine. Thank you, Chair. So uh, this is one uh, in my ward. Um, I think it's it's very sad to see the building in this state. It it was uh, obviously had a thatched roof, and um, it was really something of quite a landmark building. Um, and I don't remember noticing that it was in particularly in disrepair when I used to um leaflet that area regularly um but it was sold and um they ripped the thatch roof off and burnt it and um it's clear the building is in a very poor state now um i absolutely agree with uh, everything that jeff tutt has said um clearly it's a residential site and we should allow residential uh, redevelopment on the site um, but I do think the plans submitted are not appropriate. So these tend to be really quite large houses with um, good sized gardens along here. It, and it comes right onto the road. So there is no um, footpath. Um, and so the, the sight lines as you're pulling out of that driveway is very poor. You're onto a, a narrow road, um, which has a lot of traffic down it at certain times. So um, I'm concerned that um, about the potential number of, of cars and the access in and out of the site. Um, but most of all, I just think this is a very urban design that's being put right on the edge of a, a rural village. And I think it would be much better to have a single four bedroom house on that site, which would be much more in keeping with what's in the in the rest of the road. Thank you, Councillor Palmer, please. Thank you, Chair. I, I do tend to agree with the parish councillor and um, the ward councillor, actually. I think there's a bit of overdevelopment there, but I also have a question, really, for the um, for Mr Elgar. And I noticed at 6.2, the um, Herne Hill Parish Council, the building be considered as a non-designated er heritage asset um, and it should be restored into its former glory, not demolished. What What is, um, what's, what's the views on that? Uh, 
thank you, Councillor Palmer. Um, I have looked into this quite carefully. Um, obviously, we've asked for more information from the from the applicant's agent. There is um, there is a structural survey that's been provided and lots of photographs. And I have also been in touch with the um, Kent Archives to find out if there's any um, historical interest associated with the building. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, my initial thought was we should be treating this as a non-designated heritage asset, but having looked into it further, I couldn't find any real grounds to sustain that that kind of initial view. Um, and given that the, the building's in um, very bad condition, it's, it's been quite um, significantly modified um, in recent years. Quite a lot of change to the building. Um, whilst it's um, whilst it's quite an old building, it appears to it appears to um, show on the um, first edition ordnance survey map. Um, because of the, the degree of change that's taken place, um, we can't really make a case to to treat it as a non-designated heritage asset. We've know that that was the initial thought. So I think. Um, my my view, as kind of relayed to the to the planning team, is that um, yes, whilst it's a shame what's happened to the building, unfortunately, um, you know what's what's done is done. We we weren't in a position to to um, do anything about that, unfortunately. And so, you know, whilst you may have concerns about the proposals in terms of the design from a heritage point of view, we don't really have any um, any sort of sustainable argument to put forward in terms of refusing the application. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bonnie, please. Thank you. Yep. I'm not sure I should admit this, but I do know this one very well because quite often when the A2 is blocked, everyone uses it as a rat run to try and get anywhere <laughs> around Faversham. So I do know this and I've seen it and watched it deteriorate um, somewhat, um, wondering what on earth is going on with that building. Um, so from where I've driven past and, and noted that is the bookend effectively to the settlement and current design, I hear we can't save it. We don't have the evidence to save it, but I'm not keen on the design that's been put forward. Um, I don't think that such effectively creates the stepping stone between what's next to it is um, a rural, I think it's an orchard, isn't it? Um, but it's certainly, um, steps straight onto the countryside there and that is an extremely tight bend and that road is very narrow which inherently reflects its rural characteristic um so I, I don't believe that the treatment from a design perspective um is sufficient here and i would go for, so far forward as to say that i would be prepared to put forward for an adjournment on this for a month that maybe the officer could have a a discussion with the applicant to see if they could come up with a better design there. In particular, if you look at the roof levels of, of what's there and what's next to it, I know next to it is a fairly modern building, um, but this has got quite a low roof. And so you've got that stepping stone into the rural environment, whereas this, in terms of context, is just a box or two boxes um, right next to a field. And you don't get that that feel, that rural um, character um, has effectively disappeared. I mean, that could be on any housing estate in any location, and that's not inherently part of the characteristic of this village. So I would put a proposal for an adjournment for the officer to discuss this and bring it back to the committee, and I don't know if I have a seconder. Okay. Councillor Dender, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. We have a proposal. Is that what to be? Happy to second it, Chair. Okay, so that's for a deferral. I'm taking it. Yeah. Okay. Still seconded. Councillor Hunt, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, and bef before we defer that, can we understand what officers have gone through with design first? And I'm sure there's probably discussions already happened with the applicant. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think the key thing to to consider in terms of design is what the context of the site is. And when I reach the 
I mean, these are the adjacent dwellings and and I think they're they're very much in keeping with that. What's also too important important to consider is that we've got a condition requiring materials to be uh, to be submitted. Um, we could bolster up that condition if there was a specific type of material that members sort of thought would be more um, more in keeping with that site. Um, so that there's a there's a possibility to do that. And there's also um, it's also worth so worth bearing in mind in terms of stepping stepping down i think that you know i think it does i think it does achieve that from the existing street scene and then this site is is set further down um i'd be you know my advice would be i'd be very wary about having a reason for refusal on design grounds in terms of on just on the basis that it's it's very similar to what's in the street and i you know i don't consider what's in the street to be harmful at the moment Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Dender. Are we talking to the deferral substantive? Yeah, deferral. Did you on the, on the deferral? Well, I I would I would agree with the officer. Um, I I wouldn't uh, go for a deferral myself. Uh, if I look at the gap there between those houses, the way it's displayed on there, and if you go back, Paul, to the picture that you had just now. one you just had that's it and you look at the proximity of those houses yes but i can't see it's overdevelopment either on that site <clears throat> it looks like the gap is actually a little bit bigger than the gap between those houses there so no i i wouldn't go for it thank you Councillor valentine please just wanted to ask the officer whether he has photographs of the houses on the other side of the road my memory is those are older houses and they have long uh, front gardens set well back from the road. I don't think I do. Um, I think the best I can do on that what is it's this one, and I think the houses you're referring to are on the right hand side, aren't they? Yeah, but you are, but you are right. That's that is the context on the on the other side of the road. I I agree. Yeah, I just think the site's more closely linked with what's with what's adjacent to it. Also, Bonnie. Yeah, so and I think keeping that up is quite useful because things like boundary treatments, um, you know, close boarded um, fencing right on the road in that narrow lane would not well with what is opposite it. And <clears throat> the housing that's next to it may, may have been agreed some time ago, but that doesn't mean we have to repeat history. I think we can, and this is setting the tone for the village on that side. Um, the, the existing building sits qu quite low. It's got a low pitch. If you bring up a picture of the existing building, I don't know if you've got the existing building next to the old one, but you'll see as you come in on that side, it's much lower because you're coming around a tight bend. You've got a bit of field and then you see a low pitch roof and then it going up um, into the more modern housing. And what you'll do is come around the bend, have a field, and then you'll have this modern building. Um, that really, and that's got you know dark weatherboarding there. You know, I presume they were Kent peg tiles on there. Oh, sorry, thatch. But what's left under there now on the edge is um, more original tiles. I just, you know, you can see what that 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 fencing on that road there. There's not much curb appeal compared to on the other side. We've got a lot of hedging and greenery. Thank you. Councillor Henderson, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <clears throat> I, I, I think we ought to go back to square one a bit on this. We have a house. I think it's a pity it's been allowed to get where it is, but uh, I, I know the area well. I, I lived there for a few years a long while back, um, <clears throat> uh, and I went to have a look at it um, uh, last week. The existing house, I think we have to accept, is gone and finished. Um, it, it, it's way beyond uh, uh, repair, in my view. So we have an application, in this case, for two houses. And I think we're beginning to be incredibly 
pity about what is and isn't an acceptable design. <clears throat> As with many of the larger villages in Swale, Borton has a tremendous variation of houses, both in the street and in the uh, roads around. And, and I think for us to be saying that we want some particular undefined uh, design improvement is going well beyond what, what we should be doing in, in making a decision. Um, I, I, I don't believe that two houses there will make any significant difference in terms of road usage and road danger and, and so on. And if we're allowing two houses, then presumably the developer is developing what he believes people want. And I don't think we are here to tell the developer that we know better. So uh, my belief is we have no justified reason for turning this down uh, and we uh, ought to approve it. Thank you. If it helps, we're, we, we're clearly not here to tell developers or anybody else what to do. We're here to assess it based on our planning judgment and, and um, the application that's in front of us this evening. But you're quite right, thank you. I don't uh, see. Sorry, Chair, are we still talking? To we we are indeed, yes. Yeah. Okay, I don't see anybody else indicating. Those in favour of deferring? Those against? Abstentions? Okay, so that's four, four deferring, the 13 against, so um, that's lost. So we're back to the substantive. Councillor Dender, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think Councillor Henderson said most of what I was going to say anyway. Um, and quite clearly, I can't see any material planning considerations to refuse. Um, as much as uh, one might uh, deplore the taking over of the thatch, I also note on the um, on 8.2 on the report um, that the conservation officer mentioned um, that the timber frame, uh, very poor condition and the structural survey, you just couldn't rescue it. So it can't be a, um, a heritage asset. Um, I really don't see any material planning consideration to refuse, so I can only say that I will approve it. Thank you. Members, anybody else? Yeah, Councillor Bonney? Uh, yeah, so I'd like to pick up and see if we can put a condition in about boundary treatment, something more appropriate, and um, a condition about the type of materials that are used. Yeah, if you can just point me to that, sorry. Yeah, sure. I mean, just to um, just to clarify, in terms of the boundary treatment, I, I mean, I, I totally agree in terms of what's there at the moment. I think it's sort of visually harmful. Yeah. But but that's that's not what's proposed to be kept. And um, what's proposed is um, is planting along the front. Um, we haven't got details of that. It's just these indicative details. But we've got a condition which requires further, well, which requires the um, the precise details of the planting, which is condition four. Um, that's the that's the standard condition with some extra wording about the biodiversity net gain in there. So that that's the that's the standard condition that we'd have for landscaping. Can we put a condition in then that stops them putting up close boarded fencing so we don't end up back in this position in the future? We can remove permitted development rights for them to do so, yes. That is that is an option. Yeah. Yeah. And about the use of materials? <clears throat> yeah, so materials is under condition th just look at, yeah, three. Um again, if if there was something if there was something that the members, um, you know, a particular material that members um, were keen on seeing on that site, we could, you know, we, we could word that condition appropriately to to enable us to secure it. 
Yeah. But I think we'd need to know what what material what material or materials that, that members were were particularly keen on. Just I, th I suppose seeing the visuals of what's there um, or what's proposed, um, whether something that could be, you know, I don't know if it, because the existing building has some weatherboarding on it, you know, that's something a bit more reflective of a, a more traditional look. I'll let the ward members speak on that. It's more their domain than mine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sorry to jump in. The the indicative details um, show essentially that the lower half of the dwelling is brick built and the upper half has as weatherboarding. Okay, Councillor Martin, please. Yeah, it was just a, a a very brief one from me. I think the officers are on the right side on this one. Uh, perhaps something that the parish councils may wish to consider. Um, for future reference is having uh, data from their uh, local housing needs assessment that I would assume they've conducted uh, for their points that they've made under 4.6 regarding the uh, policies in their neighbourhood plan. Um, I can see that there is a desire for smaller housing, um, but without the information to back that up, it's not something that I can consider and it would be really useful to have that information. We know borough wide that we want two and three beds, and it is disappointing to see three and fours coming all the time, but unless we've got that data behind it, we can't do anything with it. Thank you, members. We'll take this one to the vote then. Those in favour of the officer recommendation with the conditions as a ended. Yeah. Those against? Abstentions? So that's 15 for, two against. So permission is granted, subject to the issue of the decision notice. Thank you, members. Uh, we now move on to item 2-2. Uh, two, two. And this is um, 103 Barden Hill Drive, Minster. I'll just let Councillor Jones leave. OK, members, could I invite um, Parish Councillor Dolly White, please, to speak on this item? Uh, sorry, uh, Councillor White, could you just hold fire for a second? It'd be useful to get an outline and an update first. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Thank you. A couple of updates for, for members. Firstly, they should have a tabled update um, in front of them, um, which deals with some queries that have been raised by local residents. Um, one in relation to visibility displays and some concern that the displays would um, uh, infringe on private third party land. Um, we have checked this with Kent County Council, um, who had originally um, not objected to the scheme and were happy with the displays. Um, we've checked as a matter of caution and KCC are happy that the displays shown are all within um, their land. Um, so, um, that is um, yeah, that we 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 remain um, of the view that that's acceptable. Um, secondly, um, another representation from a local resident um, raised some concern about um, a small discrepancy in the site layout plan in relation to the line of their boundary. Um, that has been um, corrected um in some amended plans that have been recently received it's a very minor discrepancy which doesn't materially change the um the scheme um and so um as far as we're concerned that's that's been corrected as well um a verbal update for members as well um having reviewed the planning conditions if members are minded to go with the officer recommendation to approve um, this application, I would recommend that two further conditions are added to the um, permission. One is um, for tree protection measures to be installed for the construction period, particularly in relation to a tree that is on the southern boundary of the site. And the second is because there is 
Um, some slight levels changes across the site, I would recommend that a levels condition is imposed as well. Um, in terms of the um, an outline of the application itself, um, the, this is the site location plan. Um, the um, the building at the front is is a detached bungalow, and it's got, as members can see, a fairly well unusually large garden attached to it. It's within the built confines of of Minster, and there's no other planning constraints. Um, that's an aerial photograph, which I've included because um, I wanted to highlight to members um, the relationship with the neighbouring property in particular here. Um, the the access into the site um, is is here, and in terms of um, the increase in activity, I just wanted to highlight to members that um, this is a, a an outbuilding, a garage to uh, the neighbouring property. The actual living accommodation to the property is is here and you'll see that on the photographs in a minute as well uh, in fact you'll see it now <laughs> um so uh, this is the this is the application site um you'll see it's flanked by two-story terrace on one side and then this is the the neighboring property here so as you can see that's the the outbuilding a double garage that i was referring to earlier and the actual bungalow itself is is here and then here's some photos within the site itself um, so these um, are um, views looking towards Hilltop Hilltop Road. That's right, the rear of dwellings on Hilltop Road. That's looking in the northern direction across the site. Um, well, sorry, the one on the left is the one on the right is then looking back towards Barton Hill, uh, Barton Hill Drive. That's looking across the site um, towards the neighbouring property at Barton Hill Drive um, on the left and on the right. Again, that is um, another picture taken looking back towards Barton Hill Drive and the, the cream building that you can see on the right hand side is the is the immediate neighbouring property. So that's the site layout as existing. And this is the proposal. So the proposal is to demolish the existing bungalow and to erect four dwellings in its place. These three units at the back of the site are all bungalows, two bed bungalows, and the unit at the front is a two storey dwelling. Um, that's a two bed unit as well. So the bungalows essentially all follow the same design, um, but they are um, uh, handed. Um, and then this is the proposal for the detached two storey building at the front of the site. Just going back to the query over visibility displays, apologies because I think it's slightly blurred, um, but this is the display that's been shown on the on the plans in which KCC have confirmed they're, they're happy that it's um, across their land. Um, so the officer recommendation is for approval. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you. Could I now invite uh, Councillor Dolly G. Wright to speak on this one, please? Uh, good evening, members. Thank you for your time and consideration on this planning application. Uh, over intensive development, not in keeping with the street scene, inadequate access, parking, and impact upon highways and impact upon neighbouring amenities. These are the concerns raised by the parish council and condensed into four sentences on the planning officer's report. Looking at the documents provided, we can see the infrastructure around this site is not reflected properly in the documentation. It never really is. Uh, just in the last couple of months, we have seen very serious accidents in that area, including roundabouts that cannot cope with the large flow of traffic in the area, huge traffic build up around peak times of congestion uh, and standing congestion, pumping out pollution on school routes 
uh, and obviously the hospital is uh, right there as well. Um, KCC Potholes Department have just uh, decided they've gone to code black, whatever that means. I'm assuming that means they've run out of money uh, to support uh, areas like this in terms of supporting the infrastructure we already have or do not have, as it may be. Uh, the position that the parish council take have been taken on copious amounts of these planning applications. It's the same again and again and again and again. Uh, so if you'd like to have a look at those plan applications, it's the cumulative effect that we're not supposed to rely upon, but it is in effect here all the time, which happens when you try to squeeze so many uh, developments into a very small area with no increasing of infrastructure, no increasing of uh, numbers of hospital places, GP places, schools places, or anything else that an active community needs to actually exist, not on paper, actually in real life. Uh, <clears throat> if education is needed on the interaction with this process, then I look at the authority to do the legwork instead of the residents who pay for this process to take place in the first place. We're very lucky that we have residents that want to take place, uh, take part in the process and have left neighbour comments on these applications. But there are many, many more that have not. And in fact, on the planning officer's report, it wasn't even mentioned that uh, a resident's petition had been put on on behalf of this application. Now, not everybody's got uh, internet access, not everybody's got the confidence to take part in the planning process and to have it not even cited is is terrible. Uh, Please pay attention to residents uh, on this. Uh, we've, we've asked this time and time again. For the residents to take time to organise themselves and provide response uh, is a commitment and is to be applauded, not ignored. If it is a legitimate way of engaging with the residents in your process, then we must make efforts not to exclude them and to include them and to listen to them. Otherwise, really, what is the point of you being here? Uh, I'd also like to particularly focus on condition 12. Uh, which isn't actually... So that's your time, thank you. Oh, sorry, thank you. Thank you. Could I now invite Mr Andrew Street, please, to speak on this item? Thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. I'm speaking on behalf of the applicant, Mr. Schofield. Schofield sorry. This proposal is a full plan application for four dwellings in a highly sustainable location within the Minster urban area. As the case officer has mentioned, this proposal is at the front for a replacement dwelling in the case of the bungalow, which will be two storeys with three bungalows at the rear. Highway access is existing off Barton Hill Drive. Prior to submitting the application, we undertook pre-application consultation with the local authority. We've taken on board all of the advice provided by the authority at pre-application stage and work with the council's officer throughout the determination of this application. In line with the advice provided by the council, the properties at the rear are bungalows, for which there is a high level of demand for such accommodation within the local area. The property at the front of the site is two stories in height, it's a similar scale and design to the existing neighbouring properties along that side of Barton Hill Drive. There will be no harm arising on neighbouring properties on Hilltop Road or Barton Hill Drive. We've achieved this and exceeded the recommended separation distances between the new and existing houses. The proposed development will not have any impact on the adjoining properties through overshadowing or loss of amenity. The proposed scheme is policy compliant with the recommended internal space standards and a rear gardens, including bicycle storage and secure storage for garaging. Kent Highways have raised no highways issues with the proposal. In summary, the proposal is for four houses in a highly sustainable location. The highway access is acceptable to Kent County Council. We can provide the requested section 106 monies, which the applicant has agreed to. There's no loss of amenity affecting adjoining properties. We can provide three bungalows and one replacement dwelling along with adequate car parking and outdoor amenity space. And the proposal complies with Swirl Council's car parking standards. Thank you.
Thank you very much. I move the officer recommendation. Can I have a second to please? Out of Bonnie, thank you. Right, just be just before we um, open up to the floor, I'd just like to bring Mr. Byrne back in, if I may, please, because a little bit of a query that I have. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to highlight to members that under Section 5 of the report, um, uh, particularly underneath the list of objections in 5.1, <laughs> members will see that um, we have stated that a 23 signature petition was received during the course of the application. So it is reported in the um, in the committee report. Thank you. Thank you. That was my question. It was coming your way. Uh, Councillor Harrison, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I will admit the the eyes are going, but um, is there any way you can pull that? I'm I'm just trying to see how much um, um, how much space if you want a washing line, basically, how much garden or whatever you call it. They got each of those those um, four have got. Can you can you like, zoom in? Mr. Chairman, can I come back? So don't 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 move do move it. So so we'll call it bungalow one, two, three, and then a house. Bungalow one, I'm presuming all that there does seem to be a line, big thick line. So everything behind that is like yours. So then the bungalow two, there's a little bit of land at the back, and the, then then the, there's that round the side. Does that round the side belong to number two? Because then what's number three got if this is where you all drive in? So um, I can, my, here we go, my arrow appears. So this is, this is the hard standing area and the parking area here. As you say, this is the garden to plot two. Plot one has the large area to the rear. Um, and plot three has this area here as its guard. But its parking area is here. This is this is the hard standing here and um, manoeuvring space um, to get in and out of the parking spaces. And then the dwelling here has this garden area here. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Councillor Hunt, please. Chair, um, li li listening and looking at the concerns that have been raised, I think it's one of the situations where you can't win. You, you're building houses within a built up and a area boundary in a sustainable location, and there's complaints that people don't want them there. If we, if this was three bungalows out on a greenfield site, people would be saying that they don't want them there. And I think at some point we need to start looking at land, especially in built up area boundaries um, and accepting that there will be houses probably coming forward on there. And it's much better doing that than on greenfield sites. I think the way that this has been done is, is good. It is a good size plot. Um, for, you can see from the, the photos how much room there is there. And um, when looking at these gardens that we've got on here and looking at the, the similar properties, um that are just to the side of that they're, they're not far off the actual sizes of existing properties around it so it has been well laid out um it is good that we are actually seeing bungalows and i think that as was mentioned by the uh the speaker the, the agent said that officers had, had asked for that and i think through those discussions it's good that, that we have put, officers have pushed for that and we, that's what we're getting they are much needed um there is nothing at all that I can can see that there was eight representations received which have raised 
some genuine concerns. I think on the petition, probably it doesn't make clear in the report that the 23 signature petition was um, 23 people saying that they didn't want it. I've, they might have been saying that they do want it. Uh, we're wrong. But um, I, I would assume they didn't want it. But with petitions, it, it doesn't really help in planning. Sometimes it is better to have sing, single reasons, single comments and reasons why, um, so we can look at them in planning terms. But if everything on this one I see is, is a good development. Thank you. Councillor Palmer, please. Thank you, Chair. I won't repeat what Councillor Hunt said, but I do tend to agree with him. I've often argued saying that things should be built within the um, confounds of a built up area or and, and more bungalows. However, I do have one concern and that's highway safety. And I know it says the visibility sprays are fine and in KCC have said it's OK, but that road I know and I think, unfortunately, I think you need to see it. So I, I would propose that we have a site visit to check the scenery of it, because I think the road and high, highway safety at my, in this application outweighs the benefits. I think the parish council's right that there may be a bit of over intensification of the site, but my main concern is the highway safety is onto the road. So I'd like to propose a site visit. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Darby. Anyone want to speak to it? Councillor Hunt. Thank you. We, we had the same situation as this before where I've said that if we go out for a site visit, are we suddenly going to become highways experts? We can go and look at the site and see what visibility displays there, but we're not going to be suddenly knowing what, what is right and what's wrong. And we've got advice from from KCC. Um, I think they have checked it, double checked it, and officers have gone back to them and done their own queries. Um, we've got nowhere to go on highway safety on this one. Thank you, Councillor Simmons, please. Um, to the, uh, speaking firstly to the, um, the the site visit, I don't think a site visit, visit is necessary, uh, Chairman. I, I should be voting against a site visit. Uh, I think the officers have. Uh, presented a, a fair case. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Not to labour the point um, from Councillor Hunt there, but uh, we've already been told that in highways is not going to be a reason for refusal. We have the expert advice. We're, you know, do we want to go and waste money getting additional independent reports uh, when it's not budgeted for? Um, when that advice is probably going to coincide with what KCC have given us on this one, a site visit would be very much pointless and just delay the, uh, to the decision um, by probably another month. Um, and while I'm here to the main applicant, it's nice to see bungalows that have gardens of a reasonable size for people who utilise bungalows. The number of times you see them with oversized gardens and then end up having to get the charity sector or dare I say, the housing associations assisting with the maintenance in the long term, and you end up with problems further down the road. So uh, actually quite a well put together development. Thank you. Councillor Harrison. Yes, now I may not come here very often, but I was trained. <clears throat> and no matter how much my local knowledge and everybody else's local knowledge on the transport situation in that area um, is concerned about it, and I've been on many, many, many site meetings on highway stuff, it don't matter if highway says not a problem, end of story. It is not a problem. I don't agree with it, but that is the way that the law works. They are the highway authority. I am merely somebody who knows about these things, as is as is a lot of other people. So if highways say not a problem, it ain't a problem. It don't matter if we had hundreds and thousands of people saying there's a problem there. In their opinion, same with the wall drainage and you name it. If the specialist people give their professional opinion, then you ain't got a cat in hell's chance of overturning it or going to appeal and winning on those grounds. So no matter how much I might think, you know, it's a bit dodgy down there, as we all have at various times, it doesn't matter. It's what highways think and say that matters. I would echo Councillor Martin's um, comments on the bungalows. I have raised that many times here as well. Um, and when we get back to that main report, I would like something in it which makes 
the bungalows, bungalows forever and a day and not, oh, can we just stick a bit more on top here and can we just stick a bit more on top there? I think you find there are things already in there. But, um, yes, you don't come here very often, Councillor Harrison, but um, on that basis, I'd like to see you come far more often. Thank you very much. Councillor Dender, please. Thank you, Chair. It's all, all all being said, actually. I agree with all the previous speakers. Um, I would be voting against a site visit. Um, but I, the only point I was going to make, most of the people in this room, I think, know that road well. So I don't think a site visit actually gives us any more information anyway. And no matter, as, as others have said, no matter what you say to KCC Highways, they've already said it's acceptable. That's it. Thank you. Councillor Marchington. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just a quick one. Um, the Barton's Hill Drive is a 40 mile an hour road and uh, the residents have been trying to push to get that changed for many, many years and to no avail. Thank you. Thank you. So, members, we're now voting for the site visit, site meeting. Are those in favour? Those against? Abstentions? So that's two, four, and 14 against. So that motion falls. We're back to the substantive motion. Councillor Dender, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, the one thing I can't see, I may have missed it, and my apologies if I have, um, it does say um, flood and water. Um, the, there's no comments. It doesn't say no objections, it says no comment. Um, what I can't see is about water drainage, um, and I just wonder if any you've got more any any more information about uh, sewage drainage and so on, and how it's getting into the main sewers, particularly as a, if there's a combined sewer up there, because uh, it is on a slope, um, and there is going to be sewer fish runoff, and I'm just wondering if it's going to hit a combined sewer. Be grateful for any information. Yeah, just as a, an indication, obviously that will be a, a building regs matter, but um, I don't know if we've got any information. Mr. Burns, would you like to come in? Yeah, um, I'm not quite sure why. I think it must have been a mistake, but um, the KCC Flood and Water Management um, Department were consulted on this application. However, they only comment on majors. Um, so hence why they made no comment on this. I think it was probably just a, an error at validation stage that, that they were consulted. In terms of um, how they will deal with um, waste um, and water, um, as, as the chairman's already said, you know, that would be a matter that would be dealt with by, by building regulations. I, I strongly suspect that in terms of waste, um, you know, the obvious, the obvious answer is that it will link into the existing sewer. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Harrison. You said you wanted to speak when you came back. Yeah, only I, um, I'm just Too late. trying to find. No, don't start that. Mm. So I won't come again. Mm. No, <laughs> brain fog. No, it was about, I've just, um, I shouldn't have read them so early. I should have read yeah, them. Yes, in the conditions. Sooner. Yeah, in the conditions yeah. about, you know, bungalows are well sought after. Yeah. I would hate for these to be made. Is it called a dormer? You know, yeah. all these and end up two, two or three story. That was all. So whereabouts was the condition? 19. Yes, con condition 19. I mean, the condition 19 removes the ability to carry out roof alterations and enlargements under permitted development. What we can't, of course, do is say you shall never make an application to us to extend your property upwards. But obviously that then brings it within our gift to consider whether that's acceptable or not. Um, but that condition removes permitted development rights for them to be able to do so without um, getting planning permission from the local planning authority. Good. And so in, in your paperwork, say this comes back in 15 years time, you will see that members 15 years ago had concerns about X, Y, Z, and that's why they put it on. I'm just trying to get the audit trail just in case at some point in the future. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Councillor Simmons, please. Thank, thank, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to say that I thought that the officers had got this, this right. I and mean, it is a rather awkward 
shaped piece of land I and mean, it's a very big garden for that one property i do think it's it's a shame to see um to see all the green areas um filled in with housing even within the built up area uh, they are a bit of a green lung and and it, it is a shame uh to see to see them go um but i accept that this is a it's an awkward shape uh, garden. It's a very large garden, and being triangular in shape, uh, I think that putting the putting the bungalows in, I think, is a good a good thing, uh, as as others have said. Um, so I'm going to support this application. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Councillor Darby. Please. Thank you, Jim. Uh, one of the concerns I've got is that there's a row of terraced houses, and I presume, looking at that, uh, obviously the officer about um, he's there's going to be another house added on to the end of the terrace in place of the bungalow, which has got a slight driveway down the side to a detached garage. So that will now be the entrance. Um, I don't entirely follow. The the, the new dwelling is, a deta is detached, so there's a small gap between the new dwelling and the and the terrace to the right hand side. Would it be worth bringing up a photo? Um, showing the front, oh, wrong way. So that house you're looking at, that two-storey, that is, yeah. as you can see, there's a row of terraced houses. So we're going to let's say we're going to put a detached dwelling where the bungalow is. Yeah. And then there's a small driveway down the side that goes to a detached garage, which is now going to be the entrance to the, to the development. Side. Yeah. Will that be wide enough that two cars can pass each other? Two cars don't pass each other through the access, but because of the small number of units, um, obviously KCC have looked at that and considered whether there's there's an issue there or not. But essentially, because of the small number of units, the likelihood of cars being in conflict with each other is is pretty low. Well, I was just thinking of like if a car's waiting to come out, all the traffic to back up along Barton Hill while they're you know, trying to get in and out. Um, yeah, um, well, I mean, you've got the, obviously, um, if a, if there was some conflict there, um, there may be some minor conflict at the at the entrance if, you know, a car was about to turn out and one was about to turn in. If it was further in the site, you would assume that the car that was exiting would just go back into the parking area until the other car has passed it. Um, but like I say, because of the limited number of units, um, the view is that that's not an issue and obviously KCC haven't got concern about that and the impact that um, uh, that there could be on the on the public highway. Thank you. Councillor Bonnie, please. OK, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I totally understand um, the local community's concerns, but I think, you know, um, we would lose appeal. I don't think we've got any planning grounds on which to refuse this. However, obviously there's tweaks and design and I'm going to drive you all up the wall. Um, I totally understand what Councillor Harrison was saying about keeping these bungalows. It's great that they are bungalows and they've come forward as bungalows and we'd like to stay as bungalows. So what is the height from the top of the ceiling to the top of the pitch? Is it low enough that it can't be converted into a usable space? Because the biggest put off, I think, from converting something in the future is if that that pitch height, otherwise you've got to take the whole roof off and that becomes a major cost and is less likely to lead to a conversion at a later date. So I think, or, or can we put it into the officer's hands to ensure that the pitch height is such that it makes that difficult in the future? Um, I wouldn't know without scaling the, yeah. um, but can the we size of the roof. That? But of course, the point of condition 19 is that they can't put windows in. Yeah, They can't put, and that's roof lights as well as dormer windows so they don't you know they don't have the ability to convert that to habitable space without coming to us for planning permission i understand that but i think if the physical build in the first place is of a height that wouldn't allow 
a, an easy conversion. Do you understand where I'm coming from, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> um, yeah, so that, just, that's, that's my first point. Um, sorry, just before yeah. we move on, can I just bring our head of yeah, planning on, cool. on that, that point? Yeah. Expediency. Thank you. Um, we can't alter the pitch. The pitch is what's applied for. But if you think about the construction of a roof, it will have roof trusses inside it, um, which means that it won't be easily convertible in any event. Um, you can drop a ceiling height. I've done it in a garage. You can drop a ceiling height so you can make that space upstairs easier to convert. But, I did actually. <laughs> Sorry. But, so I'm just, you know, if if not being pedantic here, but we are agreeing to a design and layout as part of this. Um, and I think it is the committee's wish that it stays bungalows. So if it is designed in such a way that that makes it a challenge in the future, it's more likely to stay as a, a bungalow. The second part is... So, sorry, we're still on the first part. Okay. We're just going to get a response. Yeah. So again, I come back to, um, we have to, you have to determine what's before you for yep. determination. Not only would it be difficult, but it would also require building regs approval as well. So there are opportunities to frustrate that ambition. But I think your strongest defence is uh, removal of permitted development rights. They can't do it without coming back to us. Yes, I totally understand that. But they can easily put an application in. Um, and if it's only then putting in some roof lights to convert that roof through an application process, um, it's less likely, you know, it's likely to get approved. Whereas if they've got to take the whole roof off in order to convert that, it becomes such a cost that it's most unlikely then. Second part is um, we are responsible for internal layout of the estate. Um, are we expecting bin lorries to go down there or are the bins all going to be put at the end i.e. to the entrance because we've been told only one vehicle can go down there there's effectively four bins that would be going out on bin day plus food waste so i just don't want to see it that we can't get our vehicles in and out of that cul-de-sac yeah so um there is a bin collection point for bin days and if i can get my mouse to work it is there so um, the intention is that lorries won't come in and manoeuvre around the site. Right. Bins will be pulled, you know, obviously bins will be taken down there from the residents on bin day. Um, and then the bins will be able to, uh, the, the bin men will be able to access those bins from Barton Hill Road. And there's sufficient width for the vehicle to get down there with those bins there? The, the, I don't. The, I don't think the lorry will attempt to go down that access. It will. No, the it, residents. Oh, the res. When yes. The yeah, yeah. 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 That's okay, right. Yeah. That's cool. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you, Councillor Dender, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think my question has been answered. Actually, I was simply going to ask, and following up from Councillor Bonnie, if roof lights were part of the PDR, and I think it's been answered. So they would have to come back to us to to put roof lights in anyway. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, we'll take this one to the vote then. Please, those in favour of the officer recommendation. Those against? That's 14 for and two against. So permission is granted subject to the issue of the decision notice. Could somebody be kind enough to give um, Councillor Joe's a shout, please? He was listening at the door, I think. So we're going to do uh, item 3-1 next, Council Marching. Things we've got speakers on that one. It was either that or I thought you just got bored and we're going home. OK, members, we're going to um, juggle the agenda now. So we've got um, speakers on this one. It's item 3-1. And that is a 2 1 oblique, a 5 0 2 2, a 5 6 oblique out. Uh, and it's land east of East Nelson Avenue, Minster on C Sheerness. And I thank the officer for an outline and any updates, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've, I mean, in addition to the tabled update, uh, there's, there's a piece of clarification uh, around the appendix that. There was supposed to be an appendix to the report, which was an appeal decision. 
for a site known as land west of Elm Lane. But um, the appendix hasn't been attached, so apologies for that. So I'll just talk you through it. Um, it's on page 86 of the agenda at the top of page 86. Um, it explains, it gives a brief introduction to the appeal. As you can see, it was for up to 100 houses. Um, it was on the site that I've that I've got outlined on the on the screen for members, and and this like this land is immediately to the east, actually adjoining um, the site we're going to be looking at um, today. And I've also got a photo of it. This is the view from um, from Elm Lane, looking looking west, to actually sort of west northwest across the site. It's, as you can see, it's um, actually a, a very aesthetically pleasant piece of land. And as you'll see from from what's in the report, um, we took it. It was members refused it and it went to a hearing um, last autumn. And our substantive reason was to do with the landscape harm. And we successfully argued that despite the fact that we don't have a five year housing land supply, um, the, the harm was very significant and that that harm outweighed um, the benefits in particular, the delivery of the up to 100 houses. And if the inspector found that to be a sort of wholly persuasive argument and and dismissed the appeal. So so that's the clarification on that and I'll um, I'll go back to my presentation. That's OK. Um, so as I said, this this land is immediately to the east of the the appeal site that we were just talking about. Um, I've got it on the on the screen there. It's the north of north of Nelson Avenue and the west of uh, sorry the east of Scockles Road. Um, this is <laughs> this is the view from a public right of way, sort of considerably to the south, looking north, and uh, and as you can see. Um, it's it's obviously a, little, a lot clearer when you're there in the flesh, but but it's actually quite a um, a, a nice piece of landscape in that there's an escarpment running from Scockles Road going going east, takes in this site and the site um, where we won the appeal. Um, so it's the same issues as the appeal, effectively. There's a block plan which I've which I've included, which which is really just an enlarged version of um, the location plan. But you can see at the bottom there that um, that one existing dwelling called Pandora is a detached bungalow of a double garage for, for anyone who sort of wants that information would be demolished to provide an access. They provided an illustrative block plan and it shows how that, that access could work. Um, but as that's an illustrative layout, it's just an example of how um, the up to 64 dwellings could be accommodated. But as this is an application with all matters reserved, they're, they're not applying. Um, they're not looking to agree any of these details. And this is a constraints and opportunities drawing that just kind of this is this is kind of like the the logic that underpinned that layout that they've come up with. Um, what's what's helpful on this one is it's good. It's got contour lines so you can see just behind the gardens on Nelson Avenue at 25 meters. And then it sort of by the time you get to the, the back of the site, you're at 50 meters. So that's really quite a substantial um, change in levels in 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 a piece of land that's only a few hectares in area. So, and that and that slope is a lot of what makes it special from a landscape point of view. But as I said, it's quite a pronounced escarpment. Escarpment, and putting sixty four houses on there will obviously be, you know, a, a big change in the landscape. Um, the last the last slide I've got is um, some illustrative sections. Again, it's just certainly the top one shows how how the how the sort of the, how the houses would would sit on um, on the levels. Um, so so that's really the the presentation. And just to just just to emphasise, this is subject to an appeal, and we've put we've put forward the putative reasons that are in the report. And um, as per the tabled update, we're looking for authority for an additional reason reason to deal with air quality issues as well. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Can I invite uh, Post Councillor Dolly White, please, to speak on this item?
think this one should be uh, quicker than the last one because, uh, as usual, uh, lots of the things are extremely repetitive from these applications that appear in Minster because, strangely enough, we have over 2,000 open planning applications or uh, applications not yet started in uh, Minster in a very, very, very small area. A uh, whole island is about three miles by 12 miles-ish. So trying to squeeze in these planning applications is uh, quite a hobby for these developers, so it appears. However, uh, so I'll just put out a few points that the Parish Council have quite rightly highlighted. So uh, Paris Greenfield site is um, being outside the local planned uh, development area would involve a further loss of open countryside to the detriment of a much loved landscape. Um, again, thoroughly supported by the um, brilliant point, I feel, of the impact on the overall vision of Minster Village and Grade 1 listed Abbey and Gatehouse Museum, which will be detrimental and cannot be mitigate, mitigated against. This goes against Swaborough Council's local plan policy, which is to protect and conserve the local heritage. So again, we see another planning application coming forward that will have a major, major effect on the vision and the view and the heritage of the area that once the decision is made will be spoiled and cannot be replaced. We are going through that at the moment with an active planning application in a 20 metre radius of this one that has in fact pulled out a half a hedge that cannot be replaced, that is ancient, has been there forever and cannot be replaced from, from, from that point of view. And residents... Uh, and hopefully our, our councillors are seeing that Minster is full. We've had enough uh, and residents quite rightly have also had enough. Um, and, and we would look to the local plan to help protect these residents, protect these areas, uh, protect our heritage in this area. And we're looking for support this evening as we are on all the planning applications for you to see the residents side uh, and to make the right decision to support them rather than use the local plan against them, uh, if that makes sense to you. Uh, so the last point I'd also like to make, again, uh, is that the number of dwellings that for the proposed site, it, it does represent over-intensive development, exacerbated by the height, bulk and close proximity of the dwellings in the street scene. The overall effect will be uh, incompatible with the scale, design and character of the established low-density housing that typifies the surrounding area. And uh, as we've just heard, uh, that could all probably change in the next level of planning application that comes forward for this site anyway. So uh, we'd like you to think outside the box uh, and have a think about protecting this area, keeping the, the heritage for our children and for future generations. And these decisions can only be made once. So please think about what the residents need uh, in this situation. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Can I now invite uh, Mr. Mike Worrell, please, to speak on this item? Okay, so it appears that Mr. Worrell's not online and he's not in physical attendance this evening, so um, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, could I now invite uh, Councillor MacDonald, please, as the ward member to speak on this item? Yeah, good evening, members. <clears throat> I'm just going to deal really with traffic generation, which is obviously my speciality. The proposed development is totally unsustainable. If allowed, it would be the last straw to break the camel's back in the terms of even more traffic generation. Minster and Sheppey as a whole has suffered from over-intensive residential development, causing extreme pressure on the inadequate infrastructure, including road and footpath networks. There are a number of development sites in Minster already allocated, uh, amounting to many hundreds of new residential properties, particularly on Thistle Hill and Barton Hill Drive areas. Some are currently on stream, and there is therefore no justification for developing further greenfield sites. There are virtually no employment opportunities on the island. 
new incoming residents of working age either remain non-employed, causing further stress on the overloaded social and healthcare systems, or have to commute off the island. Realistically, most have to use the motor car, adding to existing congestion and air pollution. To service the applicant site, traffic would have to uh, uh, decant onto Scockles Road, that's through Nelson, uh, where the very the footpaths are either non-existent or in, in parts very substantial. Commuter and other traffic would need to join the A2500 lower road at the inadequate Scockles uh, lower road junction, which has many road traffic accidents. The design capacity of a normal two lane highway is 13,000 vehicle movements a day. Existing traffic on the lower road A2500 between Barton Hill Drive roundabout and Cousted roundabout A249 Trunk Road is already operating at about 50% over over its design capacity. Currently, there are approximately 20,000 movements, uh, vehicle movements a day. The only solution is to dual this section of the A2500 lower road, but there are no plans or any funding for KCC Highways, the responsible uh, road authority to undertake these works. Finally, I would ask members to reject this unjust, unjustified speculative greenfield uh, development. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, um, Councillor Neil had intended to speak this evening, um, but he's, he's been called off to work. So um, I've got our Democratic Services Officer that's going to um, read out um, his submission. If you're busy, Thank, you. Thank you, Chair. So Councillor Pete Neil's statement reads as follows. I'm wholeheartedly against his proposal to build even more houses in a totally inappropriate area. The roads in this area are entirely inappropriate for a development of this size. Elm Lane is only a single lane with few passing points. Nelson Avenue and Drake Avenue are residential roads with a lot of on-street parking, which if this development is allowed will lead to massive congestion, which will further exacerbate with, exacerbate with other developments in the area. Furthermore, it will be yet another encroachment on our precious green space in Minster. Much of our green space has already gone, and I certainly think this development will erode this even more. I'm also concerned about surface water drain off and the extra strain foul water drainage will have in the area. I urge the committee to reject this proposed development. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now move the offer recommendation. Could I have a second, please? A second, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Jays. Members, it's just worth reminding you all at this point that we're not here to actually determine the application as it's, it's gone to appeals, but we're here to determine what how we would have um, voted had that been the case. Um, Councillor Henderson, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I, I agree with all the points that have been made about uh, traffic. Um, so I'll set those aside and simply say, regardless of traffic, this is an appalling development. Um, it will horrendously damage residential amenity in Scrockles Road and, sorry, I'm not sure what the other one is, Nelson yeah. Avenue. Um, it, it will... Uh, and um, <clears throat> Mr. Wilson showed some of the visuals from the site. Um, they are very important green space. And frankly, it's a balmy idea. And uh, I think we should make a decision this evening which says, you know, that we've worked with the developer to try to get some sense into this but if this is the development being proposed then we would have turned it down by 17 votes to nil uh, and i think apart from the traffic issues the the residential amenity and the visual amenity are huge issues thank you thank you very much councillor harrison please Thank you for coming. Uh, God, you keep this up. I'll come again. Um, 
yeah, I, if this had come forward, I would have supported a refusal. Um, so I do support a refusal. And I also uh, agree with the comments about the air quality and environmental health. Um, I know, you know, when we had really high knocks down in Sheerness, it was OK if you kept moving, but if you were car stopped, you know, you were, could drop dead. Um, and, you know, we should take more more notice of these things because the cumulative impact of all the different bits and pieces in the air, you know, it's a killer, it really is a killer. Anyway, what I was going to say was, um, you know, I've said what I would, would vote. Um, people have commented, um, two, well, one from the public uh, uh, parish and one Wood councillor, and there's a whole whole list here of of particular you know objections because of X Y Z A B C D E F G, and most of them are not planning reasons for a refusal. And I'm going to take this opportunity to say that over 18 months ago, I asked for a briefing at the area committee so that members of the public could come along and hear. It was the same briefing that went to Calc or whatever that was, um, so that members of the public could actually gain some knowledge so that when these things come up, they don't sit there and think, God, they're taking not bl a blind bit of notice of me. But we can't take a blind bit of notice of you because we are bound by statute as to what are, what are considered planning conditions. So I'm just highlighting again that I did ask for that people in the room agreed it, it just then happened. But it would be a real boon to members of the public out there who do take an interest in their area. Um, when you explain it to them, well, you know, if the highways say it's OK, you ain't got to get any other chance. Oh, it's wrong. But that's the rules. That's the law of the land. So, so yeah, I, I just sort of flagged that up. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Hunt, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, not really a lot to say on this. It's pretty straightforward. We're not going to be making a decision anyway. Mm. Officers have come up with a solid reason for refusal, and I, I doubt there's anyone that's going to go against it. Um, not even me. Um, <laughs> but I, what I do want to say is that how excellent that presentation was by the officer. Um, I think it may actually be his last one. And, uh, <laughs> I was just taking the I can, I can rest assured, I can assure you, it won't be his last one. It'll be his last one here as well. That's what, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and I just thanks the officer for all the years that he's been here. And um, we've worked together quite closely on some applications over the years. And uh, it's going to be missed by this committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'll you be speaking much. about that shortly. Uh, Councillor Jays. Thank you, Chair. I think it's a good report. Um, it's the right recommendation, but we should have, should have had this before us months ago. Following the decision next door, I think the writing was on the wall for this one. Um, and I think we should have been deciding this rather than it going to appeal. Um, I welcome what the Parish Council and the Wall Councillors have said. Um, I don't think there's much more to say um, other than sit highlights about outside settlement boundary not connected to the urban area. I won't rant about the bus services and lack of healthcare like I did previously, but um, I think it should be noted. Thank you, Chair. And it has been. Thank you, members. I don't see anybody else. Oh, Councillor Bonnie. Cheers, thank you. Um, yeah, I agree with um, the conclusions of this report. Um, I give significant weight um, to particularly the landscape, et cetera. Um, and those um, policies that dictated. So to my mind, the tilted balance doesn't apply because those are so significant and that we must stick to reasons that we can fully defend at this appeal. Thank you. Thank you. So just before we, we go to the vote, again, I'd just like to thank Mr Wilson for all his hard work and commitment and, and just assure me that it's not your last committee, Mr Wilson. It might be your last one here. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. That's, I thought that's, I thought somebody had you down as heading for retirement, but I thought you knew something I didn't. <laughs> I'm not promising never to come back either. No, well, we wish, <laughs> wish the best of uh, the best of luck in your uh, future endeavours uh, from us all, anyway. And um, and thank you for your wise counsel at our um, previous meetings. Thank you. 
Um, just before we do, I've got one more job for you to do for me, if you wouldn't mind, and that's just to outline the additional putative reason, just so members have got that, and we can add that to the... Uh, yeah, by all means. I mean, as per the tabled update, it's an extra reason for air quality. So um, it's really the case that they haven't demonstrated that there isn't going to be an unacceptable air quality impact. Um, it's quite possible as part of the appeal that they will be able to demonstrate that there isn't an unacceptable in impact. They just haven't done it at this stage. I mean, I suspect where we're going to end up is we've got reason number one, which I think is a really a strong reason, particularly given the appeal on the adjacent site. But the other two reasons might well fall by the way, wayside in due course, Chairman. Thank you, Member. So we're now going to the vote for how you would have voted had we had the opportunity to determine the application. Those in favour of the officer recommendation with the added putative reasons. That's unanimous, so permission would have um, been refused had we had the opportunity of um, determining the application. Thank you all very much indeed. And we're going to move on to item two, three, please. Let's council marching to enough like a ground out of the traps. So this one then is um, item 22 oblique uh, 504805 oblique full, and it's the Russian Club, Russian Road, Queenborough. And I thank you, officer, for a brief outline, and I'm sure there aren't any updates. Thank you, Chairman. Um, no update on this application. Um, it's a, a very minor scheme. Uh, members will note from the report that there's no objections or concerns that have been raised. And the reason why it's in front of the committee is because uh, a local member has submitted the application on behalf of the um, on behalf of the club. Um, the application is to um, install a disabled access ramp and a new entrance. Um, to the to the building, um, the works have um, essentially been carried out. Uh, members can see that from the the photograph here. It's the um, the blue door that members can can see. And um, there's been some internal configuration to allow this access, which in itself doesn't need planning permission. If any members are wondering why the existing doors couldn't have been used, it's because that um, takes you to a cellar, um, and um, it's not possible to get out into the main building from there. Um, but essentially, that's the um, that's the scheme. Um, members can see again from the floor plan. You've got the red line there that shows the um, raised ramp and the new entrance that's been proposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. I move the officer recommendation. Could have a seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Jays. Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I haven't got a problem with this. I'd just like to record that I'm really pleased that we've got a robust process in place to show transparency and that planning rules apply without fear or favour. Um, so I've got no problem at all with the application. Thank you. Thank you. Members, I don't see anybody else. Those in favour of the officer recommendation? Yeah, that's unanimous, members. Thank you very much indeed. So permission is granted, subject to issue of decision notice. And can somebody retrieve Councillor Marchington, please? Oh. Right, we now, we now move on to um, item uh, 24, which is uh, 22 oblique 505611 oblique full. And this one is Burntwick, the street up church. And I thank you also for an outline and any updates, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there is a tabled update which should be in front of members, um, a minor uh, amendment to condition 19 in the recommendation. Um, that condition removes certain permitted development rights. 
um, to the um, for the new dwellings. Um, it didn't include removal of rights to install solar panels on the roof of the building. Uh, excuse me, on the roof of the building. Um, and um, it's been included um, essentially to mimic the same condition that was imposed on uh, the previous recent scheme that was approved on the site. Um, just moving on to briefly present the application. Um, the site itself is um, garden land um, next to Burntwick, which is this detached property here. Um, it sits um, uh, very close to the centre of Upchurch, but um, is actually outside the built confines, which you can see are highlighted by this red line here. Um, it's also located immediately adjacent to the conservation area, which is this brown line here. And you can see that we've got St Mary's Church um, further to the south. So that's Burntwick and the pitch on the right is essentially the area of garden that's subject to um, the proposed development. Again, further pictures. So this is the application. Um, members will probably be familiar with this site. It was an application, uh, the, the site was um, reported to committee, uh, I think it was last summer. Um, it was an application for two dwellings, but two semi-detached dwellings um, rather than the two detached dwellings we have now. Um, the um, members voted for a site meeting um, which was undertaken and following that site meeting, the previous application was was approved. Um, but what we now have in front of us is an application to um, develop the site for two detached dwellings um, with some minor um, external changes to the buildings as well. And that shows you the um, scheme on the left is the scheme that was approved and the scheme on the right is what we now have in front of us. Um, I should say as well that um, obviously in terms of the um, the fact that the site's outside the built confines that was considered under the last application and um, the benefits of allowing the scheme were deemed to outweigh the, the harm which was um, considered to be particularly limited in this instance um, given that the site is essentially surrounded by other other buildings um, and that that same principle essentially applies here in terms of the fact that it's 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 technically outside the built confines, but we consider the harm to be very limited. So we're really only looking at the the changes between the two schemes and whether those are acceptable. So um, this is the application um, that we have, which is for these two detached units here. Um, you'll see that this unit here has got a, a hipped roof um, and this one here has a barn hip. Uh, there's a gap of about 1.2 metres between the two buildings and because essentially the semi-detached pair have been separated in turn that means that um, the plot two which is the right hand building um, has moved 1.2 metres closer to the boundary with neighbouring properties here. This is um, a comparison of the two schemes um, so members can see um, that the scheme on the left again is the scheme as approved Scheme on the right, essentially same ridge height, um, but again, we've got the detached units. Um, originally, when the application came in, um, it proposed a barn hip on plot two, similar to plot one. Um, we negotiated with the um, applicant to um, turn that into a turn that into a, a full hip to slightly lessen the impact on on the neighbouring properties. Um, there's also some other design changes so for example you can see under the approved scheme uh, there was a sort of front projection which um, was quite wide and all rendered um, in white you've got a projection now which has a slightly higher um, gable feature um, the render is limited to this section of the building and then this area here is glazed um, there's also some very minor changes to the design of the windows and the members can see as well <coughs> excuse me, that the roof lights have been removed. Thank you, pardon, I was going, going to show you this one. So this was the um, this was the proposal um, originally as submitted, which has been superseded and replaced with a, a HIPS roof here. Um, under the, so in terms of heritage impact, um, the conservation officer's happy that the changes are, are minor and um, don't cause any 
any harm to the conservation area or setting of the listed building. Um, in terms of impact on um, neighbouring properties, if I go back to the site plan. Yeah. Um, there was um, some concern raised by members during the course of the previous application about the relationship with the proposal and these properties in particular here. Um, so you've got these properties on the poles and this property here, which is number 21, the street. Um, the, um, the proposal obviously brings the um, uh, building on plot two marginally further north and closer to those properties, but there's still some quite significant distances to the properties at the poles, which is set out in the report. Um, they also comply with the um, building research establishment daylight and sunlight guidelines, which we normally apply, which we commonly sort of call the 45 degree rule and the 25 degree rule. Um, but also the application includes a more technical daylight and sunlight report, um, which has been carried out and which concludes that there is no um, harmful impact on neighbours in terms of loss of daylight and sunlight. So our view is that those changes are acceptable. They're very minimal in terms of the difference between the approved scheme and um, the current scheme. Um, and our recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Can I now invite uh, Councillor Palmer, please, as a ward member, to speak on this item? Thank you. I appreciate the officer's report, and I don't actually disagree with the majority of it. I do feel that there's only one issue this evening that you really need to consider. I think everything else was covered in either the officer's report or the um, the application last last time. But this application will affect the visual amenity of people in the poles, the upchurch, and the street particularly number 21, but it affects 21 the poles and 21 the street, funny enough. Burntwick, as those who attended the previous application site visit, will recall that the application site is slightly higher than the poles. And moving it close to the fence line, what two, moving it close to the fence line will have an overbearing effect on 21 the poles and will lead to an overbearing of, of their outlook. This point was well made, and it's in actually part five tonight, the appeal at Greystone in paragraph 10 on page 142 of the report, and at paragraph two of, uh, as this application at Burntwick will lead to a significant harm to the people living in the poles, and particularly number 21. The harm to the living conditions for the residents of the poles, particularly number 21, will far outweigh the benefits of this application even with the tilt of balance under 11D of the MPPA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now move the officer recommendation. Could I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Jase. Members. Councillor Henderson, please. Could we just have some comment from the uh, officer on, on this uh, impact on number 21 and number 21? Yeah, certainly. I mean, if I can draw members' attention to um, paragraph 7.12 and 7.13 of the report, um, that sets out some more detail um, in terms of the relationship between the the proposal and number 21 um it's rather faint on the um uh on the presentation but if you can can you see can you see my uh my mouse that's the that's the that's the back of number 21 there um and the distance from number 21 to the flank wall is um 7.5 meters um so when you apply like i say I mean, that's quite a considerable distance in itself, um, but also when you apply the um, the building research establishment guidelines and what you would do there is apply what's called the 45 degree test. Um, it's basically you draw a, you draw a line from the um, from the dwelling at a 45 degree angle towards the, the, the neighbouring property. And if the line um, cuts across a window of the neighbouring property, depending on how much of that property the line cuts across it, 
could potentially have an impact. Well, this this clears the window completely. Likewise, um, in terms of the relationship with the um, development and the properties on um, the poles, um, you apply a slightly different test there. It's called the 25 degree test, which is because the windows in the poles are directly facing towards um, the development site. But again, when you carry out that test, the um, uh, the test is completely clear of those neighbouring windows. And then, as I said earlier, in addition, the applicants actually provided the more technical daylight and sunlight test, um, and that also um, complies and meets the, the BRE guidelines. So our view is that whilst it is slightly close to the neighbours, um, and there are some slight changes in the in the design um, that the impact is still acceptable in planning terms. I just say I accept the uh, officer's advice on that. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to hear from Mr. Olgar actually in terms of um, potential impact on the the church. Thank you, Chairman. The, the site is visible from the church, um, but it's, um, it's only really one visible um, through one one spot where you can actually view the site from the from the churchyard. It's the north end of the churchyard, um, close to the to the back of the um, the Crown Public House. Um, you can't really see the garden because of existing um, hedge, hedges and um, boundary treatments. Um, but the um, the houses, the new houses would be visible. So. So there, there is some intervisibility between between the the Grade One listed church and and the the application site, which is why um, obviously design is an important issue, and and also why we've felt it appropriate to impose a condition um, removing permitted development rights to make sure that we can manage the the appearance of those two the two houses, um, and obviously there is a a relationship between. Um, the property number 21, which is uh, within the conservation area, and another, another um, an older, uh, from an older age, um, with um, with Burntwick and, and the two the two new properties, um, and that's also um, influenced the design of the the scheme to sort of differentiate um, the design from from the older 19th century properties within the conservation area um, to the north of the church. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Hunt, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, th I think all the, with how close it is to the houses and I think it's all been covered, I think it's all the technical details are all in there and been looked at um, in sort of more detail than we normally would do. So it is, it is good that that has been checked. Um, we've, trying to see which one's on the screen there. That's the, um, there is just something with with the hips, and I, I think the actual design is better than what what it was with uh, those two two blocks of houses there. But just dur during discussions with this this hip and the barn hip, I think what what was just it would be good to understand a bit more about those discussions and what was done because I can understand with with the um, proposed house on the right there um, have, having that hip when it would have been a barn hip and obviously taking it away from the boundary, but just leave leaving the other property with a barn hip, just looking at that seems to be a little bit like it's it's out of not out of keeping, but I don't think there's any reason to refuse it. But in design terms, it just seems to be not matching um, with that house in the middle having a barn hip. I just wondered if there was discussions about just changing them both so they're looking similar, especially to the existing house. Um, or if it was something that a developer really pushed and wanted. The, yeah, the, the discussion was centred on um, changing the hip to plot two because although um, although we still felt that um, it would be unlikely to change our recommendation, um, we felt that putting a hip on it would make the scheme more palatable um, and acceptable, and obviously you know kind of slightly reduce the impact on on neighbours as well. Um, the reason why. Um, we didn't we didn't broach the need to um, change plot one as well because the the change was primarily to try and reduce the scale of the building on on neighbours. 
Um, and ultimately, whilst they are different, we didn't feel as though that in itself was was harmful. Um, and particularly because the site is quite discreet, uh, discreetly located in a backland location, we didn't feel as though you know these these properties would be particularly prominent um, and cause any kind of particular um, visual impact um, that that would be unacceptable. I mean, it's a you know obviously a question for members to consider, but our view is that this isn't this isn't harmful, um, and I believe that's the view of Mr. Algar as well. But Mr. Algar can speak for himself, obviously. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think. Um... I wasn't heavily involved in the sort of late discussions, but I think the, the the idea was to try and um, create some distinction between the two units to, to make them a little bit more individual. So, um, as well as the um, the difference in the in the roof form, as you'll see to the front elevation, there's slight variation in the um, fenestration treatment. Um, it's I think it's an improvement over the previous design. It's a little bit more coherent, but you'll see there's differences to the um, the gable. And the white sort of rent gable in terms of the treatment there. So I think it, I think the intention of the applicant was just to, to to provide a little bit of individual individuality to the two units. Um, that's my understanding. Thanks. Thank you, members. I don't see anybody else indicating, so we'll take this one to the vote. Those in favour of the officer recommendation. That's unanimous members. Thank you very much indeed. So permissions granted subject to the issue of the decision notice. Um, we're just left with our part five items now. And I normally look to my left on part five historically and I've looked again and I've seen Councillor Simmons's hands flying up. Thank you, Chairman. I do not for one minute <clears throat> presume to fill the shoes left recently vacant. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I've got the understanding of 5.2 correct. An application was made to the planning committee. The planning committee refused the application. The applicant went to appeal, lost the appeal, yet Costs were awarded against the borough council for refusing the the original application. Yeah, I think that was um, partial costs. Based yeah, upon, partial costs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did you want to come, Mr. Bell? Mr. Byrne, comment rather than jump in. Yeah, it, it's actually not not in the area I cover, but I know enough about it. I think um, the one of the reasons for refusal was a uh, highways ground, um, which the council was unable to substantiate. So although the inspector dismissed the appeal on the on 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 the other grounds that the council pursued. Um, the highways grounds, um, obviously, the inspector did not agree with that, and secondly, did not consider that the council had submitted any robust evidence to to substantiate that ground. So that's why it's a partial award of costs. Councillor Martin, please. Sorry to contradict the officer. It wasn't highways. It was the impact, uh, the, the highways impact on the conservation area, which we were told by officers was a really shaky ground and wouldn't hold up at appeal. So um, once again, the officers tried to assist us and for some reason we decided to ignore them. So uh, I think uh, an apology from the committee on that one to the officers, but they we were right to refuse it. Just we got the second reason wrong. Thank you. Councillor Hunt, please. Thanks. Um, I'm not sure about apology from committee. I'd actually say listen to officers and not Councillor Bulldog. But um, one, what I will say is I also think the first reason for refusal got lucky on. Um, I will admit at the time I, I feel we should have been approved. Um, always happy to say when I am wrong on something. Um, Are you just saying that now? <laughs> Is well, the recording still on? I haven't been wrong before. Um, but yeah, well well done to the committee for getting that one right. Um, but we do just need to be careful what we're doing. And uh, when it's come up time and time again, we need to make sure that solid reasons and we've got evidence to back it up. Absolutely, thank you. 
Right, members. Um, it must be nearly nine o'clock because we always terminate at nine, don't we, Councillor Simmons? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Well, yeah, but sorry, I hadn't put my clock back. I only stole it last week. Right, wish you all a safe journey home. Thank you all for your deliberations again this evening. Thank you, officers and all participants. And um, look forward to seeing you in the near future.